Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Dark Parade. This is the second episode of the new year of 2022. I'm kind of treating myself in the month of January with a series of movies that I just really like. Uh, last week, we started off with Lose with Richard Glenn Schmidt. And this week, we are going to Hammertown uh, for a movie entitled The Brides of Dracula. Uh, it is a Hammer Studios film, uh, and, and one of my favorites. We'll get into that more in just a minute with uh, my guest Derek Bourgeois returning to talk a little Hammer horror. Uh, but I just wanted to say thanks again um, for coming along on the ride with The Dark Parade uh, last month was uh, our third official month of doing the show and and did super well. Uh, so again, thank you to everyone who is, you know, downloading the show and listening to the show and sharing the show and all that stuff. So a uh, big thanks for all of that. Uh, it, it really is making a difference. So, you know, I would ask if you're listening to the show and you haven't done so yet, uh, please, you know, rate and review the show on spotify or itunes or wherever it is that you, you get the dark parade uh it is extremely helpful and much appreciated and at any rate without further ado let's keep the uh the train rolling with uh the movies that i like and by the way in february we're doing a whole month of listener requests so you know what's good for the goose and all that like here's here's some of my favorites and uh here are the movies you are going to subject me to come February, and some of them are just punitive. I understand that. Some of the, the picks that have been pitched at me are just movies that you, you want me to watch so that I suffer. And uh, and that's okay. That feels like a real relationship, you know? Sometimes you hurt the ones you love. Uh, so, at any rate, we'll get more into that later. Right now, sit back, uh, pour yourself a snifter of brandy, swirl it around, take a sip, and get ready for uh, a journey into Victorian vampirism with uh, The Brides of Dracula from Hammer, starring Peter Cushing and uh, Andre Melli uh, as, as Gina, the iconic vampiress. Uh, talk to you on the other side. Welcome back to uh, another episode of The Dark Parade. This month is, uh, as you heard in the previous episode, is all about stuff that I like. And one of the things I like is talking to my good buddy, Derek Bourgeois, who is here to discuss a Hammer classic with me. And uh, welcome, man. Welcome back to the show. Returning champion, Derek Bourgeois. I survived the magician cops for this. It was worth it. It was worth it at the end. You yeah. get to talk about some Terrence Fisher. Man, our, and I, I kind of want to start with that, which is, uh, obviously we're talking about The Brides of Dracula. It is the, uh, in theory, it's the sequel to Horror of Dracula, which, which Terrence Fisher also did. But it has no Christopher Lee in up in this piece. This is just, you know, Terrence Fisher doing what Terrence Fisher do. And just to run through this real quick, this is, uh, all right. So he did horror of Dracula in 58. He did revenge of Frankenstein same year, did hound of the Baskervilles in 59, which is a great version of that. Mm -hmm. Did the mummy in 59, did brides of Dracula in 1960, did his version of Jekyll in 1960, did curse of the werewolf in 61 did Phantom of the Opera in 62, did The Gorgon in 64, did Dracula Prince of Darkness in 66, uh, what else, Devil Rides Out in 68, I mean, that's probably where I, the Island of Terror is Terror, somewhere in the middle in there somewhere, which is a non-Hammer movie, which ironically enough, but it feels like a Hammer movie. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I'm skipping over some stuff like Earth Die Screaming, Horror of It All, another Sherlock Holmes joint, um, but, like, the guy kind of defined what Hammer horror movies were, you know, or yeah. at least did the initial interpretation of, like, hey, you know, like, I'm going to show you the Hammer version of, of Dracula. Here is the Hammer version of Frankenstein. Here is the Hammer version of the Wolfman story. And 
they were all great. Yeah, he, the way I would describe him, he's like the he's like the Hammer version of say like if Hammer was Toho, he would be the Ashero Honda of Hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, I'm trying to think of who who else comes close in terms of maybe like Todd Browning, in terms of yeah. like defining what classic monsters are like when you think of dracula you, sure you think you know or i mean if you're a horror fan you, th you go back and you think of uh bela lugosi but christopher lee is side by side if not more prominent in the minds of horror fans as far as what you think of when you think of dracula you know like the bloodshot red eyes and being all smooth and whatnot and you know that's terence fisher and christopher lee and you know doing peter cushing as van helsing like the let's be fair casting goes a long way here but he still did just an amazing job of sort of redefining what these classic movies were you know like he took the universal template threw in some some boobs and <laughs> and some british actors and technicolored the hell out of it and they just look, they look great. They sound great. They move at a nice clip. I Like Terrence Fisher, you cannot say enough good things about him as a director and as, uh, as sort of a, a linchpin of horror cinema. The thing, first the film I've probably seen of his work is probably Curse of Frankenstein. And that's like, that's my Dr. Frankenstein. And, you know, throughout the series when it goes on, like, it's just great that they get Peter Cushing back for a majority of those movies just to repraise that role over and over again to the end of Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, I think, is the last one of those joints. And, yeah. Fucking great. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, just love it. I love it. So, let's also talk about uh, what this movie is you know what the plot will we will meander through the story and mm -hmm. according to the film the canon of this movie dracula is fucking dead and we yep. know that because there is narration at the beginning of this that goes transylvania land of dark forests dread mountains and black unfathomable lakes still the home of magic and devilry as the 19th century draws to its close count dracula monarch of all vampires is dead but his disciples live on to spread the cult and corrupt the world and it's like all right now this is a movie oh yeah and so we, we start off with Marianne Danielle, uh, who is our sort of lead uh, actress in the film, uh, or the lead character in the film. And she is played... Yvonne Malore? That sounds right. Yeah, uh, I like to think of her as Frenchy, um, but that's probably not right. Yes, Marianne is, yeah, Yvonne Malore, as you said. And she is uh, a school teacher who is going through the armpit of Transylvania to get to her new assignment. Yeah. And uh, there's, uh, w which I really like, there is a whole bit about her, like, telling the, uh, the stagecoach driver, because she's on, you know, like, in a carriage going uh, across the Transylvanian countryside. And she's like, oof please slow down and he's like <laughs> fuck that shit like do you know what's going on around here lady we are we are in transylvania and the sun is going down enough i we are getting to the next town and that is enough and uh so anyway yeah so they they get to the uh the the nearby town where she's like oh do you have a place i can stay for the night my coach left and they're like, no, we don't. We're not letting strangers in our town. Do you know what kind of vampire shit we've been dealing with around here? 
Well, that they don't tell her that, but that's what's going on. Like everybody yeah. in town is just like, no, we do not accept strangers, and best of luck. Uh, but then introduce uh, Baroness Meinsta. Marita Hunt is this actress's name, who is like, hey, fuck all these yokels. <laughs> How about you have a drink with me? And and I like the fact that Baroness Meinster, not necessarily a fan of the local villagers. Yeah, she yeah, she's just looking down on them at all times. <laughs> right, throwing mad shade on all of them all the time, which is understandable given the fact that they probably knowing what they know are probably like, you know, a bad weekend away from storming her estate with torches and murdering her son. Yeah. But but for good reason, right? But uh, anyway, so uh, she's like, hey, would you like to come stay at my place? And, uh, and you know, Marianne is like, oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yes. And I like the fact that all the villagers are like, I, I don't know if that's such a good idea, but nobody... Come on. Yeah, the, the, the guy who owns like the pub is like, I got a next to carriage and horses, so I'll just give you them. Right. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> You can sleep in the barn or something. And she's like, oh, not a, I can sleep in a nice bed at their estate. <laughs> uh, so she goes off with Baroness Meinster and to the big estate, you know, their castle uh, that they own because it's a Hammer movie and of course there are going to be castles. And she ends up spying the Baroness Meister's son, aka Baron Meister, um, who is like on a balcony looking all forlorn and whatnot. And she's like, oh, I thought your son had died. And the Baroness Meister is like, uh, nope. Well, I mean, there are two schools of thought about that. So, uh, but uh, let's just if you want to stay here, that's cool and all, you should probably stay away from that door. But I know you won't because I know the kind of girl you are, and that's really kind of why I brought you here. And so sure enough, um, as soon as, you know, the dinner is done and night falls and whatnot, uh, Marianne sneaks to the locked up bedroom of Baron Meister, who is also chained to the wall. And... Uh, he's like, oh, they say that I'm insane. Is that what my mother told you? And she's like, oh, but you're so handsome. And Un Get me the key and I will fuck you right now. Yeah, he's just <laughs> like, hey, how about you let me out of this this leg chain? Wouldn't that be awesome? And she's like, oh, I don't know, but you are so handsome and they have been mistreating you so badly. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're just trying to take all my land. You know, like, this is all a plot against me. I'm, You know, my mother just doesn't want me to inherit. She's old and wacky. So she just doesn't want me to inherit what's rightfully mine. And so she's like, okay, well, I'm going to steal the key uh, from the Baroness's bedroom and I'll set you free. So that's, sure enough, what she does. She sneaks into the Baroness's room, steals this key, goes back to the Baron, and lets him out. And he's like... All right, now we can get down to some partying. And the Baroness sniffs this out pretty quick. And the Baron, I like the fact that he's like, well, that's right, Mother, I'm free. Does that <laughs> upset you? Oh, you could tell he was an evil bastard as a kid. Yeah, he's real precocious. He, he's got like a uh, like, uh, 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 Macaulay Culkin kind of level of precociousness only now he's also undead yeah i did realize he did have the McAllister here yeah he does he he's got a nice wig yes uh this blonde wig the, the whole idea was like hey we're gonna you know make sure that this is different than the christopher lee dracula who had the black slick back hair and so this guy looks more like he, sh he should be fronting a 60s band um, which in fairness, like this is 1960, so he looks of the time, yeah. uh, not necessarily of the Victorian time, but of the time that the movie was filmed. Uh, but so sure enough, 
the Baroness goes to the back to the Baron's room with him. And then we also meet Greta, who is the house servant, who is like, I have taken care of the Baron since he was a baby. Oh, you foolish woman, you have set him free. And look, look at what he has done. Would you like to see the Baroness? And <laughs> uh, so Marianne is like, uh, would you say it like that? I don't know if I do. She's like, oh, come see the Baroness. And sure enough, the Baroness is like dead, bitten, and drained of blood and whatnot. Yeah, Greta is fucking great. <laughs> she's, uh, she's gonna like, I believe that Tom Waits did her like in her, her and instead of Renfield in his performance of Renfield. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, master. Yeah, it's, it, it, she's real over the top, but in kind of a wonderful way. And because she does this whole monologue once they find the Baroness's corpse where she's like, oh, you led him down the road of deviltry, cavorting all night, drinking. You raised your son on cruelty with bad company. And, and apparently bad company means that one time he ran into Dracula and Dracula bit him and that's how he became a vampire. Yeah. And, and so the Baroness, instead of destroying her son which is understandable she just chained him up and then would just lure girls back to the castle for him to feed on it makes me wonder how long this has been going on for i mean a while because she had it down man and also the people in the in the town were like i don't know if you should go with her because a lot of girls do and a lot of them don't come back yeah that's true <laughs> so yeah she definitely had a thing like me and me and Baroness Meister, we had a thing going on, uh, as a wise man once said. But yeah, so uh, Greta, by the way, is like, look, despite the fact that he's a murderous undead monster, I am still loyal to the Baron. Marianne just kind of flees the castle. <laughs> and, and is found the next morning by Van Helsing, aka Peter Cushing, who is on his way through this town as well and she she's like oh i don't remember what happened and peter kushi is like yes yes well what about vampirism have you heard anything about that and she's like i don't know this word and he's like all right well you have no bites you seem all right uh and then uh she's like oh i'm on my way to this old girl's school it's very sexy <laughs> and he's like interesting that's where I'm going as well for different reasons but also sexiness so come along with me <laughs> it's fucking great you're uh like it's so it is so like that in the movie too like when Cushions Cushions is great all around like you can see why he's a legend and you know yeah. it's like awe expiring you know, when he's performing and oh so good like he's Peter Cushing is always great, and this is one of my favorite performances of him as Van Helsing. Uh, especially when we get towards the back end of this, when it's him in the barn, like cauterizing his neck and stuff. It's yeah, when he's when he's just doing John Rambo stuff. Like, yeah, oh, it's so <laughs> badass in a very polite British way. Like this is as like you know balls out as a hammer movie i think is gonna get until until you get into the late 60s and 70s when they were doing like just straight up nudity and whatnot but for being a film in 1960 this is pretty out there yeah yeah for sure but hammer knew what they were doing right like hammer knew the keys to a good movie are get some good actors have some scary moments have have some buxom women and and make it all garish and colorful and and like it's all melodrama but it totally works because all of those ingredients work together into a delicious cup of ramen mm -hmm. uh but anyway so van helsing is taking her to the the school and uh, on the way they're going back through this village and when he gets to the end it turns out there's a funeral in progress because apparently funerals are conducted uh, at the end as well. Small town. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, wait, what's going on here? 
and they're they're like hey van helsing uh we found this other l lady uh in an alley and she's dead too and he's like oh well let me see the body and so they take him to the body and sure enough there's bite marks on the neck and he's like oh, son of a bitch this is a vampire and so he gets in touch with father stepnik who was, had called for Van Helsing in the first place because he was like, hey, I think there's some vampire shit going on. And if you're if there's vampire shit happening, the one person you want on your side is 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 Van Helsing. Yeah, I almost said Abraham, but it, like it's not Abraham in the Hammer movies. It's like yeah, MVH yeah. or DVH, something like that. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it was like the way he's like. Oh, I called for you, definitely. You're the guy who took out Dracula. Of course I'm going to call for you. Right, yeah. Right, you have quite the vampire rep because you killed the master of vampires. Did you hear the the guy in the narration at the beginning of the movie? The monarch of all vampires is dead because of you. So this is probably a minor vampire situation, so probably not that big a deal, but I think I got a vampire situation. And the Van Helsing is like, look, you cannot bury this girl. I have to do some things. And the father is like, no, 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 you're not going to screw around with my daughter. I'm going to bury her as, as God intended. And Van Helsing is like, all right, but I'm just going to have to do my vampire shit later then. And, but sure enough, they, you know, bury her, allowing her to become a vampire later. But so that night, Father Stepnik and Van Helsing go to the cemetery. And in my absolute favorite scene of the movie, Greta. Greta is laying on the dirt and is like, I can hear you just a little further. <laughs> and dude, it's fucking creepy. Like in a, like Hammer movies, you know, there are moments here and there that are, are like, oh, that's kind of kind of chilling. Her like coaxing this vampire out of the ground. I think is genuinely one of the scariest things in any Hammer movie. It's pretty fucking great, man. <laughs> you know? It's awesome. And it, you don't see that very often. You know, after the uh, Greta completely awesomely talks this vampire out of the ground, you know, this is the point where Van Helsing and Father Stepnik, like, spring. Where they're like, aha! We, we found you! There's a vampire here. And... Uh, Greta is like, go on, go on, girl. I'll take care of this. And basically just kind of runs interference. And, yeah. and so, uh, also, um, they have to go back to the castle and Van Helsing and Father Stepnik there find the Baroness who is all like hiding her face with a shawl and whatnot uh-huh is like oh yes uh my my son the baron he did this to me and he's like yeah yeah yeah. well uh i'm i'm afraid that i'm going to have to undo <laughs> this because she's like i'm cursed an a, 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 you know an eternity of being cursed like this and van helsing is like well i mean there's a way out I can help you out there. Yeah, I, you know, that's kind of what I do. And, but, and sure enough, uh, that's what happens is, uh, Peter Cushing gives her the old steak and we get some great Technicolor <laughs> blood in the process, but, uh, it, it's pretty good. But I like the fact that it's, again, just slightly different than some of the, the stuff that you get in a lot of the other Dracula movies is that the Baroness is not cool with being a vampire you know whereas like most of the movies are dracula being very cool with being a vampire and his you know nubile ladies and occasionally you'll run into a dude that he's turned who is also just kind of a mindless follower of dracula whereas mm -hmm. the baroness is just like i hate this this sucks and and that's why you know peter cushing gives her the the steak way out um but yeah, it's I I dug the fact that you get a vampire that isn't just 
a vampire zombie in in the thrall of Dracula, but somebody that's kind of contemplating the fate that has befallen them. And it's rare. It's not something that you see in Hammer movies that much. Yeah, you're right about that. You don't. Yeah, it's that's why, look, I, I'll, I've said this before. I will say it again. That is why The Brides of Dracula is secretly maybe the best Hammer vampire movie. It, it doesn't have Christopher Lee, but everything else about it is totally awesome. Hell yes. Uh, all right. So anyway, after giving the Baroness Meister uh, a stake through the chest. Also, the, apparently this was revenge. Like the Baroness is like, oh, you know, this was his revenge for me locking him up. And he's like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> I'll take care of that. And while that's happening... Marianne has finally made it to the girls' school, and the Baron shows up and is like, Hey, remember me from that balcony and being chained up in that weird room? And she's like, Oh, I'm so glad that you made it. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's like, Look, uh, I know this is going to sound like it's coming out of nowhere, and we haven't known each other that long, but I was wondering, would you marry me? Yes, right, right now. Yeah, yeah, she's totally down for it. And then, uh, and she kind of chit-chats about this with her new roommate, Gina, um, as, as played by, let me get her name right, because I will feel terrible if I get it wrong. Um, Andre Melly is who plays Gina. And I think so. If you have ever seen... Uh, Basically, any picture of a female vampire, you probably saw Andre Melly from this movie. Yeah, it's very iconic. I, I, I kind of... She, yeah, she's very... Looks very familiar. Like, Andre Melly, she was in, uh, you know, a couple of other Hammer films. Uh, I think Terrence Fisher directed one of them called The Horror of It All. Uh, but she's great. She, like, she plays... Uh, really sweet and innocent with Marianne here because I think she is you know a lot yeah. of these movies are about corruption and whatnot but you know sh she's like oh he is so handsome I'm sure that you two are going to be wonderfully happy I hope you don't mind that I'm a little bit jealous and mm. you know Marianne's like oh of course you are because he is so handsome he's going to be my husband uh, oh, 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 oh. and yeah it's it's terrific and so after they uh, kind of chit-chat about this, and Marianne is like, well, it is time for me to go to bed. And she leaves. And as soon as she leaves, the Baron kind of pops in and is like, so, Gina, was it? Um, would you mind giving me some blood? And she's like, oh, of course. Uh, you know, because that's... He whips a little hypnotism on her and whatnot. And uh, so he kills Gina. And so Van Helsing the next day is visiting uh, the school and is, is like, hey, well, I hope nothing vampiric has been going on around here. <laughs> well, I know that there's the bartender's daughter, but I'm sure that she has run off into the woods and, I don't know, probably been killed by a stag or something. And they're like, well, actually, there's a body here. And uh, Van Helsing is like, oh, well, I guess you better show me then. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, actually, I think he finds out about the death at the end first, because we've got to mention my favorite character in this whole movie. The drug addict free doctor that's, like, taking all the pills. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. The, yeah, he's kind of an, a, a pill head, uh, which is another thing that's awesome about this movie. But, yeah, so sure enough, uh, the doctor who uh, is like getting high on his own supply, uh, you know, le informs him of what's going down with, with Gina. And after he inspects her body, sure enough, Van Helsing discovers that she's got puncture wounds on her neck. And he's like, look, you're going to have to put this body in the stable and people are going to need to watch it until I get back. And if she gets up, oh boy, you should probably stab her with a pointy stick. And so that night, Marianne 
uh, is the one kind of like, oh, you know, oh, it is my turn to watch Gina and make sure that she does not rise from the dead. And so first she's kind of chit-chatting with the guy who runs the stable. And then we get a yet another great creepy scene where the padlocks that they have put on this coffin to keep Gina from, you know, romping around all vampire-like uh -huh. just pop open and fall off. Yeah. It's it's really good. And the stable owner is like, huh, well, I'll be. That's a weird thing for a lock to do. I'll be right back. Let me go fetch another one. <laughs> And so he's going to get a lock and ends up getting murdered by a vampire bat, which, in fairness, is probably the lamest part of the movie, because the vampire bat does not look great. They never do in these movies, to be fair. Yeah, this one's pretty rough, though. Uh, at any rate, we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, so while uh, Severin, the stable keeper, is being murdered by this bat puppet, inside... Marianne is kind of hanging out with this coffin, which the the final lock pops open and out comes Gina. And Gina now completely vampired out. And like I said, if you've ever seen like 60s hammer vampire lady images, you have probably seen a picture of Andre Melli as one of the brides of Dracula here. Oh, where. Yeah. Uh, she is like, oh, guess what, Marianne? I got to kiss your boyfriend. He kissed me on my neck. But I hope you don't mind me sharing. In fact, I think we're going to be able to share him forever. And it's kind of, again, a really great creepy scene where she, you see the kind of innocence that she displayed earlier about being kind of all coy about how she thought that the Baron was, you know, a real Hotsky, McTotsky. <laughs> yeah. That, that now it's that same attraction, only it's completely perverted and it's really dark and evil and all that. And she's like, oh, he's waiting for you up at the old mill. And while Gina is approaching Marianne, Van Helsing shows up to take care of business and finds Severin dead outside. And sure enough, he busts into the stable in time to save Marianne from being bitten by Gina, who then rushes off. I, I, I think it's just like a good old fashioned, I'm going to show you a cross thing. And that's going to send you scurrying. Yep. And so Van Helsing then has to take Marianne back to the school and is like, look, I know this is going to be quite a shock, but Gina, your friend, was an undead monster called a vampire. Also, your boyfriend and fiance, also a vampire. I'm going to have to destroy them both. And she's like, what? No. And he's like, yes, yes. It turns out that Gina has been, how do I put this delicately, riding your boyfriend. Uh, but more of a hell situation. At any rate, that's sloppy seconds now, honey. Well, technically sloppy third, since the other girl you're also... <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, and... <laughs> oh, then, no! And, and Marianne is like, but they said to come find them at the old mill. And he's like, oh, old mill, you say? Well, you wait here. I'm going to go there and murder all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so he heads to the old mill where he finds the Baron's coffin, sure enough, but is before he can, you know, do his filthy, holy business, um, he gets confronted by Gina, the bartender's daughter, and Greta, all three. And Van Helsing is like, haha, I've got you, and holds up the cross. But Greta, who is not a vampire, just tackles him. <laughs> She's like a linebacker. She should be on, like, the Patriots defense team. No kidding, man. She, like, cuts his legs out from under him, gets the cross away from him, and then, but during the scuffle, she ends up falling from the, like, the rafters where they are and falls in, to her death. So she's dead, and then, uh, but the cross has also fallen. Mm -hmm. And so Van Helsing is like, Oh no, I have no weapons. And then the Baron shows up and they scuffle for a second. 
uh, including like choking Van Helsing with a chain, uh, which is pretty great. Seeing Peter Cushing choked out with a chain, and and then the Baron bites him. Van Helsing gets bit by the vampire. Yeah, it was kind of crazy because it's been a while since I've seen this movie. I always forget that happens in the movie. Yeah, and it's like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Again, this is why the Brides of Dracula is secretly the best vampire movie by Amber. Because at this point, like, the Baron leaves and is like, come, my children, he will soon be one of us. And they they all take off. And Van Helsing wakes up and is like, well, that was something. Oh, shit, I've been bitten. And so he pours a bunch of holy water on it and then gets this red hot poker out of the fire in this stable and then places that on his throat. Like you said, this is just some straight up Rambo mess. Until that, you know, he has basically de-vampired the wound. Yo, his reaction when he puts the poker on his neck is like... <laughs> it's so good, man. I love it so much. And so while he is de-vampiring himself, the Baron has gone to the school and grabbed Marianne where he brings her back to the mill. And he's like, all right, well, uh, Van Helsing, it looks like you somehow de-vampired yourself i didn't even know that was possible i feel stupid for never having tried that before but at any rate now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn marianne into a vampire in front of you and make you watch and uh, van helsing is like don't listen to him marianne he's an evil demon and she's like oh okay i won't oh look at his eyes and then she's all hypnoed and whatnot and so now uh he's about to put the bite on her and then van helsing takes his vial of holy water and just hurls it into his face which gives him uh these big gaping sores all over his face and like oh. fucks him up real bad which yeah, is it does. great it does there goes your pretty face motherfucker right yeah i'll ruin those good looks of yours mm. and sure enough the, like there's acid all over his face uh in as as the vampire the baron is is thrashing around he kicks over uh a brazier uh, kicks over some uh some of the fire and now the stable is catching flame so van helsing is like oh i've got a great idea and so he grabs marianne goes up upstairs in the mill jumps on one of the big windmills uh windmill sails rides that thing and moves them around so that it forms this giant cross uh the shadow of it forms a cross over the baron who is killed by this apparently and then van helsing and marianne get the fuck out of there while the place burns down killing the baron gina and the bartender lady and that's it yeah and they, I mean, again, this is a, a Hammer movie. So once the vampires are dead and the the girl is saved, and Peter Cushing is you know has killed all the evil, credits done and done. This movie is what like ninety two minutes long, something like that. Yeah, I think it's a little like eighty five. Maybe yeah, it's it is in and out. And all right, so that's the plot. Now, uh, for regular listeners of the show, you know we will move to the cast. First and foremost, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing in this movie rules the school. He does. It is, it, again, I, he is always good as Van Helsing. This may be my favorite Van Helsing performance. Yeah, it's for, yeah, I think you are maybe right about that. Because it goes all over the place. Like, he gets bit. He, he he has to... Like you said, when he's putting the searing iron on his neck, and he's like, Hey! Oh! It's <laughs> so good, man. And he's just always like, Well, it turns out that there's a vampire, you know, rummaging around this school. It, so, it's sorry, so Marianne. I had to kill your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, you know, telling that, that bartender or whatever, like... Look, I'm going to have to murder your daughter. There's just no getting around it. I All of that stuff, I just love it all so much. It is just the best. And 
uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's Peter Cushing. It's Peter Cushing being awesome. And, and there's just, I love all of it. I love all of it. I think Frida Jackson as Greta is great. terrific. Uh, she's great in this. Um, David Peel, uh, who sadly did not live very long after this movie came out as the Baron Me- Meinster. Um, I think he's he's totally good. Like He's no Christopher Lee, but he's totally fine. Yeah, he wasn't trying to be Christopher Lee or two either so i, I kind of like his performance too yeah you know a- andre Melly as gina i think she's secretly one of the best things about this movie and then avon monlar as uh marianne i think she's great as well so i, I mean it just like it, it is melodramatic performance you know it's all it's that kind of stagey kind of acting but i i think it fits the film well and i think everybody is really good like every everybody's taking it seriously like nobody nobody's kind of winking at the camera at any point so and nobody's phoning it in that's the other thing like everybody seems to be into this oh yeah they're, they're, all, they're all pretty good and it's fun to see like small like side characters who like the drug addict doctor uh we actually have michael ripper who's like a character actor for hammer bunch of hammer movies he's in uh, plays one of the one of the coachmen in the movie. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I even like like the 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 headmaster and his wife. They're they're, they're banter too in the movie. He's like he's like, you brought him. No friends allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The headmaster is a lot of fun in this movie. As a matter of fact, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just it it's filled to the brim with great like british character actors they're all super fun they i'm sure peter cushing was having a blast making this movie sure it's good stuff all right so that brings us to phase three of our look at this movie which is uh the the themes and again like i don't think anything super complicated here this is real kind of arch good versus evil stuff uh the the idea of corruption of the innocence and um, and, uh, but there's also some stuff about like, uh, you know, kind of where bad parenting can lead, you know, I mean, again, we're on the edge of the sixties here and movies like the wild bunch and that kind of thing were, were popular at the time. And there is that whiff of like, well, if you let kids go hang out with a bad crowd, next thing you know, they're vampires and they're turning you into a vampire. Yeah, you get that overshadow scenes with, uh, you know, the Baroness, but then you also had the scene with uh, the dead village girl's father, too, which leads to, like, the differences of parenting within the movie, which I kind of like. It's kind of a, oh, she was a good girl, she didn't deserve this, you know, to, like, you know, even, like, uh, the Baroness kind of saying the same things later in the film before she gets murked, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, you know, aside from the typical good versus evil stuff, there is a very subtle layer of that. I mean, it's very, uh, you know, conservative kind of idea of, like, well, if, you li- if you're not keeping an eye on your kids all the time, next thing you know, they're the fucking undead. Hell, yeah. Um, he- Hell, even with the Greta character, it's kind of like a second mother character to the main antagonist of the film. Where, you know, I raised him since she was a boy. He was a boy. I will still be. You know, it's kind of like she's like kind of like his other mother. You know. Yeah, and 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 excuses his bad behavior just the way that the Baroness Meinster did as well. You know, like, she's like, I love him. What are you going to do? You got to go along with all the evil. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it sucks, but here we are. Any, any, any other, like, through lines that you want to point out? I, I, you know, I don't think it's a terribly complicated movie. It's not. No, just... it's, it's, it's not multi-layered, but it gets the themes that it does have, which we passed upon, it, it does them well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I And I particularly like, well, I mean, we'll get into final thoughts now, but one of the things I really like about this is it it's certainly trafficking in horror movie tropes, but it does all of them really well. 
you know, like Gina going from the sweet and innocent girl to this like super seductive and evil vampire, I think really works. Uh, all of the stuff, you know, that we were talking about with, you know, Greta being like Baroness Meinster fucked all this up for everybody. If she just kept an eye on her son a little bit more, we wouldn't be dealing with all this vampire bullshit. Um, and it's just got like the, the I keep going back to the the scene with Greta talking the vampire out of her grave. It's just got some of the coolest vampire shit that Hammer ever did. Yeah. And, and these are my favorite kind of vampires. The ones that are intelligent enough, but also driven by blood. And, I mean, they're monsters. And even though they're going to be, like, all sexy and have, you know, the hypno eyes and whatnot, it's like, they're... They are there to kill you. They are not there, like, nobody is tortured about, oh, eternity. You know, like, the Baroness Meinster is a little bit, but that's just, you know, because she's like, oh, look what I, what hath God wrought? You know, like, what have I done? And so there's a touch of that, but within the, the Baron and, you know, the titular Brides of Dracula in this movie, no, they are not questioning whether or not they want to be vampires they are down to murder yes they are and i just man i love like it ends in a big fire there's i this is one of my absolute favorite hammer films which is saying a lot because i love hammer movies a lot uh but this movie i think is like i said it's just one of the best hammer films uh around in my opinion i i I wish people talked about it more in the same breath that they do talk about like horror of Dracula or curse of Frankenstein and things like that. I think it's top notch. I like this is, can I ask you a question, please? How do you feel about it being called brides of Dracula though? I, I think it's a bad title for what the movie really is. But if you called it the brides of Baron Meinster, like that doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. Like, you can make the argument, if, if somebody were like, well, explain how they're the Brides of Dracula. It's like, well, the idea is that Baron Meinster was turned by Dracula, and these are women who were infected. Like, you can trace it all back to Dracula. Yeah. But, yeah, I just don't know what else you call it, you know? You're mm. right. And, and originally, this was supposed to be a direct sequel to... Dracula, where Dracula was the guy and these were his brides. But Christopher Lee was like, well, I don't want to be typecast. And then... A year later. Yeah, right. And then immediately was in, you know, 15 other Hammer movies as Dracula. But um, there, there was a movie later on that Hammer did called Kiss of the Vampire that yeah. might have been a better title for this one. It could have been called Brides of the Vampire. Yeah, but, I mean, then you're not capitalizing on how successful Horror of Dracula was. That's true, too. You know? I don't know. Like, lo tough. looking at purely from a marketing point of view, it's like, I, we need to tie this to the movie that was just just making us a bunch of money. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and it's ironic you, you brought up Kiss of the Vampire, because actually the original ending for this movie was actually used in Kiss of the Vampire later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's on my list of three things that you might not know about this movie. But we'll go ahead and, and get to that, which was, yeah, like, originally it was supposed to be a swarm of bats released from hell in a ritual that Van Helsing did. And, and yeah. Peter Cushing was the one who put the kibosh on it. He was like, Van Helsing would never use black magic. Yeah. He did, and you know, uh, if I'm kind of glad they didn't go that route <laughs> because I have seen Kiss of the Vampire, and that ending, if you didn't think the, the one vampire bat in this movie was great looking, oh boy, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think the, the whole like you know, fire at the mill and using the you know, the blades of the windmill to make the cross and all that stuff. That yeah, it's very classic hammer to me. I like all that stuff. It it's not the double death of Dracula has risen from the grave where he gets stabbed through the heart on a golden cross. 
Yeah. You know, that's the one where you're like, oh, you are fucked, Dracula. That is, you're killed twice uh, in in that scenario. But it's pretty good. Uh, you, you know what I like about the, the, the actual end of this movie? It, it, you're right, it is classic Hammer, but it also is sort of a callback to Universal in a sense. It was like, you know, there's a t- bunch of movies that Universal did, especially the Frankenstein movies with burning windmills and shit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely got that vibe. It's uh, it's really good, but I yeah I I love this movie. I, any any final thoughts from you on this one? Because I don't uh, I could go on and on about how much I think that all of the vampire imagery in this movie is top notch. But it, it's uh, pretty fucking great. It's a great vampire movie. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful to look because I actually just watched this uh on the Blu-ray uh that Screen Factory put out and it looks gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Amazing transfer. Uh, and with that being said, I don't know if it's my favorite vampire movie, but it's up there as one of the best of the Hammer vampire movies. You know, I'm kind of a more sadistic guy. I kind of lean on Twins of Evil as my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> because I, that's good. I, I like I like my sleeves and Evil Peter Cushion's great in that too. <laughs> but uh, you know. This is pretty fucking great for like the classic era of Hammer vampire films, and yeah, you probably you know for like ones that are in like the Dracula series, this is probably one of the best ones made, and yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's it's real good. Uh, all right, let's get to some ratings here. I I would give this movie. This is all right. As always, one to five half stars are allowed. Uh, this is a little bit of an emotional rating uh, because, I, you know, keeping in mind this is a movie that is 60 plus years old at this point and suffers from all of the things that six year old movies do. Uh, I still give this like a four and a half stars. I think this is one of my go tos. If I'm if I'm looking for a comfort movie. Like, hey, it's a Sunday afternoon, it's raining outside, it's 30 degrees, all I want to do is curl up and watch a Hammer movie. Brides of Dracula is high up on that list. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm at the same rating, 4.5 out of 5. It's pretty fucking awesome. Right on, right on. All right, well, let's get to the three things that you might not know. We talked about... Uh, the ending that was uh, later used in Kiss of the Vampire. So I'll give you three other things. Uh, Speaking of the vampire bat, there was a better looking vampire bat that the prop department made. And they actually were pretty proud of it by all accounts, but it got lost. (laughs) And so they had to cobble together one real quick, which is why the vampire bat in this movie is maybe subpar. Yeah. Uh, Also, Peter Cushing, standing at a robust six feet tall, was a couple of inches taller than David Peel, who was playing Baron Meinster in this movie. And so David Peel wore lifts in his shoes to make him the same height. Because you don't want, you know, a smaller vampire, I guess. Yeah, he didn't have that Christopher Lee height. Right. Uh, And so the the final of the three things that you may not know about this movie when the the script was originally written uh in early 1959 it was called disciple of dracula but then it was later changed to dracula 2 when christopher <laughs> lee looked like he was coming back for it and then he dropped out so they changed all the dracula shit to baron meinster and then settled on the brides of dracula as the final title but uh it went through a couple of iterations a couple of uh different uh screenplay revisions where there was dracula there wasn't dracula uh all that stuff but uh by the time it made it to filming i you know i i, I would have been curious what this would have looked like if christopher lee was in it also but i think that being called the Brides of Dracula, that like the Baron Meinster doesn't necessarily take a back seat, but it's more of an ensemble as opposed to just, hey, here's here's Christopher Lee, and then here are the ladies. The ladies get a little bit more room to kind of shine. 
Yeah, Christopher Lee was in this and be like, yes, yes, fuck me now, bitches. Right, yeah, he would, yeah, it would have been a lot more of like, this is going to be some classic Van Helsing v. Dracula mess, but uh, yeah, I, I really dig it. I, I think this is a, a absolutely terrific movie. If you've never seen The Brides of Dracula from 1960, classic Hammer, uh, then, you know, uh, there is a world in which I totally understand people that aren't in for this kind of era of horror film of like, yes, it's very arch. Yes, the acting is, you know, everybody's kind of aiming at the back row and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it also makes me feel kind of bad when somebody doesn't like a, a movie like this where you're like, you're just missing out on the best in life. You know? What is wrong with you people? Yeah, like, you can't enjoy Greta whispering to this vampire? Like, what's wrong with you? Um, yeah. Ugh. See, and, and it washes the bitter taste of Night of the Demons 3 right out of our mouths. Hell yeah. Uh, I, actually, I actually watched, ironically enough, I actually watched a Hammer movie uh, after I watched Night of the Demons 3. That's uh, that's a good call. What'd you watch? <laughs> Lego the Zombies. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I also would have accepted any of the Quatermass films. Yeah, I actually did the, a few of those for 31 I did Quatermass in the Pit for 31 Days of Horror. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That movie is super weird. Yeah. Like alien grasshoppers leading to an apocalypse. It's a pretty good movie. Satan Martians. Yeah, yes. Devil bugs, literally. Derek, first of all, thanks for doing this, as always. Uh, secondly... Where can people uh, hear more out of you uh, so that they can get plenty of Derek in their lives? Sure, sure, Boa. Thank you, as always. It's always a pleasure, Bo. Uh, you can find me on Cinema Attack, my main show, which is on anchor.fm, where are most podcatchers that you choose. But if you want to follow us and follow where new shows are posted, just join the Cinema Attack Facebook group. Just type it in cinema tag at podcasts on Facebook and just join the group and we'll add you. And we talk about every movie there, but mostly it's been mostly the horror stuff. We all love horror, but we usually dabble in other sub genres on that show too. But, uh, also you can find, uh, coming soon, soon, very soon. I've been saying that for a while, but cellulite dissections redux which I have been kind of holding the episode because just stuff in the life getting in the way of getting me ready to edit those, but they should be out very soon. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself on that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that should be coming back very, very soon. You could also find me on uh, No More Room in Hell on the Dark Discussions Network, which I do with Mike and Mr. Venom also. Uh, part of that is uh, Creature Comforts, which I do with Don Venom and Don and Nelly. Bo was on an episode where we did them. We just released the episode on Santa Jaws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah that very good episode. And I, ironically enough, I think our next episode is going to be Terrence Fisher's Island of Terror. Oh, nice. So, so yeah, and then I'm going to be talking more about Terrence Fisher later, probably this month. But, uh, yeah, also, they're here on the Cut to the Chase Network. We kind of been on a hiatus, but hopefully we'll be back soon. Uh, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, I think we're going to be recording this month. Don't, was like I said, knock on wood, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and then finally, you can find me on the Legion Patreon, where I do Blood from the Core with Mr. Gary Hill, where we look at New York-based horror and thriller movies and i'm subjecting gary on the next episode to andy milligan's the ghastly ones i don't know if i've ever seen that uh it's andy milligan if you haven't seen an andy milligan movie <laughs> oh boy <laughs> all right but, uh, yeah maybe we have to get you on there then <laughs> it's all, it, only a matter of time only a matter of time um uh, all right well uh thanks again buddy and i'll be right back to close the show and so there you have it, one of my absolute favorite horror films, I think. Uh, as I said in the discussion, it is a great rainy day kind of movie. It is really comfortable. 
Uh, it is a movie I have probably fallen asleep to a couple of times, not because the movie isn't great, but just because I will get, you know, under a blanket on a cold day, throw on the Brides of Dracula, and, and drift off to sleep in the recliner, uh, feeling quite content with myself. So, if you haven't seen it, uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. I think it's a terrific movie. Uh, and if you have seen it, and uh, you agree or disagree, uh, you can by all means uh, find me on uh, Twitter at Dark Parade Pod, on uh, Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Dark Parade if you would like to join the conversation over there, which tends to be fairly lively. Uh, and uh, you can also just hit me up at one of those locations for a link to our Discord as well if you prefer that and uh, prefer to stay off the social media channels and yet would like to uh, chit chat with uh, me and some of the other listeners of the show. Um, so all that being said, we've got uh, another banger uh, coming next week when I'm joined by not one, but two guests as uh, Dan Chase and Lacey Liu are going to join me for a look at behind the mask of the rise of Leslie Vernon as we continue our look at movies that I tend to like. So uh, as always, please rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, it really is uh, a, a treat to do the show. It It's going well, and so <laughs> I will continue to do it as long as people are listening, and I, I really appreciate you for doing so. Um, all right, that's enough out of me this time. Thank you, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. See you next time.